You're listening to episode 126 of the Product Boss Podcast. And before we jump into this amazing interview with Jasmine Starr, we first wanted to let you know that this episode is brought to you by the Product Boss Programs. You guys, we're really excited to tell you that our masterminds are now open for application and they are application only. We have very limited spots and some of those spots are already full. So if you're interested in joining one of our masterminds, we have the climb, which is for product-based businesses that are making between 50,000 a year in revenue to 250,000 a year. So if that's you, you're in the climb. And for those of you that are in the top, that would be 250,000 a year in revenue to multiple seven figure businesses. Now, my friends, if you are not in one of those um, revenues yet, we want to help you get there. And that is why Mina and I are excited to announce we are introducing a very new special program for all of you that have product in hand to about 50,000 a year in revenue. And that is called Dash Insiders Accelerator Program. So it's one of those things that's sort of in between. It's entry level. It's a way that you get to work with Mina and myself, as well as get trainings and accelerate your business to get you to the point of making 50, 100,000 a million dollars in your product-based business and then getting you guys into our masterminds and getting to work with us. Right. Accelerating there faster, dashing there, let's say. And you can get more information at www.theproductboss.com slash programs. And I'll also put the link in the show notes. So let's get started on today's episode. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo-Sita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder. She has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Snyder, with my wonderful co-host, Mina kunlo Sitap. Hey, Mina. Hey, Jacqueline. So today, we are really excited to bring you guys a very special interview with our guest. Our guest is Jasmine Starr, and she is going to teach us all how you can show up till you blow up on Instagram. And when we asked Jasmine to be on the Product Boss podcast, we had asked her very specifically, can you speak to our listeners, our physical product-based entrepreneurs, on how they can use Instagram to grow their following, to grow engagement, and then to ultimately grow their sales? And she said, heck, yes, I can. And she came on the podcast, and she gives you guys really actionable tips to use um, to grow your following. And this is the thing. like, She's going to teach us secrets secrets like that she uses in her business. And we've asked her, how do you stop the scroll? How do you get engagement? Do you use IGTV or stories? And if you're a product-based business, what are you showing outside of the sale or the promotion or the really beautiful photo? Um, Side note, she actually also gives you guys, because Jasmine's a photographer, she actually tells you how to set up for like, what was it? $12, I think. Mm -hmm. How to set up a little mini photo studio in your home and take amazing pictures using natural lighting. Such a good episode. You guys will take away so much from this um, entire podcast of how to start showing up on Instagram. Show up until you blow up on Instagram. Let's dive in with Jasmine Starr. Hey, everybody. So we are excited to have a very special guest on today, and we have Jasmine Starr on. She is a photographer and business strategist and the host of the Jasmine Starr Show. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you, ladies. I'm so happy to be here. We're glad to have you. So we're big fans. We follow you on Instagram. Um, You're amazing at doing lives and doing IGTV. Um, You also have a social curator, which you can speak a little bit more to. But if you could give our audience a background, if they are not big fans like us, um, on who you are and what you help people with. Well, how about I answer your question 
it will reverse engineer it. I believe that my purpose and my trajectory in life is to empower business owners to believe that impossibilities are actually possible for them when they have a clear path to success. So every day I wake up and I say, how can I help make the path clear for people? I am a photographer and by way of my camera, it act as, acted as a passport to validate me as a creative and first-time entrepreneur. And over the years, I've been able to share what I know and help others do the same in their business to build a brand and market it on social media. Awesome. We are such huge fans of how you tell a story. That is a perfect example of how you answered a question in just a fantastic way. And that's something that is so special when you are building a brand and connecting with your customers, as we say, to our own product-based businesses, right? So I love that so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And so a little backstory, um, Mina and I are both first-generation Americans. We are also daughters of immigrants. Um, I know that that is also a story for you. I'm also an LA native. Um, my dad, I've done a little research. Obviously, my dad didn't learn to read until he was, I actually don't know if he still can read, but little bits here and there. And um, both Mina and I have went the very traditional route. So I went to UC Santa Barbara. Mina also, she has her master's in business. Um, and I know you have a very similar route, but we're all entrepreneurs now. So we all mm -hmm. sort of came up with an idea and started our business. And a lot of our listeners um, some of them are still working full time and then this is sort of like a side hustle or hobby and other people are fully supporting their families on, with their product based business. So, um, I know that you made a big change in your life early on and took that risk of becoming an entrepreneur. And if you could share a little bit more about that. Absolutely. I mean, it it is it does say something about who we are and the considerations we take when our families have sacrificed so much for us to live the life and in this particular country. My father is from Mexico and my mom is from Puerto Rico and they met on the streets of East Los Angeles and it was really tough for us growing up. Like we are the recipients of government aid. I do believe and my father, if you were to scratch him rather seriously, he would bleed like red, white, and blue. Like there is like an American Eagle on the inside of his soul. And, um, you know, it's like what this, what this country gave to us and still continues to give to us, like has always left an indelible impression. And I believed that, um, being the daughter of an immigrant, like education, and it was never thrusted on me. I took the responsibility, but I felt like education was the way that you got out of the hood. Education was the way that you were able to move your family from different socioeconomic backgrounds. And I went headfirst into academics. I got a full scholarship to undergrad. I got a full scholarship to law school. And I just felt like this is the thing I have to do. And I never took the time to ask myself, what is it that you want to do? And my mom had, um, my first year of college, my mom had a relapse with brain cancer and she had been battling eight years at the time. And I was 25. And she she was 50. And when you get to that point in your life where you're like literally moving into what could be the next chapter, she was never asking, oh, I wonder why I did what I did. She was always asking, I wonder why I didn't do the things I wanted to do. And I felt like it was like a wake up call for me being 25 years old. And I just realized in that moment that I was tired, stressed, overwhelmed, and I was wildly depressed. And I saw what my future could look like. And I never want to look back at my life and say, why didn't I at least try to do the things I wanted to do? And thank God I can look back and like my mom and I still talk every day now. It was like a miracle that she like recovered the way that she did. But I truly believe that she became my North Star. And now I'm able to talk to other people and say, you don't have to look at somebody you love face death for you to ask yourself, what is it do I want to do? And does this make me happy? So thankful to my parents for the sacrifices they made. Thankful that they brought me to like that recollection or that cognizance at 25 years old. And now I'm like, I am 100 living the American dream, not necessarily in how much money is in my bank account, but how fulfilled I am. And am I in the process of building my white picket fence? And I say, yes, Lord, and amen to all of that. I love it. I mean, even in the past year, right, we've seen such a transformation from you. Obviously, we're speaking on um, being super fans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're getting to the end of the year of, uh, you know, 2019. Can we kind of go back to where you were at the beginning of this year even? Because we like to say, you know, entrepreneur years are like dog years. Where did you see your journey at the beginning of this year and how are you ending it for 2019? I mean... I, we, my, I have a twin sister and we casually joke that I was born with the brain and she was born with the heart. And, uh, I like, I am like, oh, I have a black heart. Like, I don't know what tears are, you know, I'm like, I don't, I, I, what, what was this wetness in my eye? I, I say that I cry like gangster tears. Like if it doesn't fall from your eye, did you really cry? 
You know, like, <laughs> um, but right now you ask me that question and I got a lump in my throat because I was just like, whoa, entrepreneur years or dog years. Because at the beginning of 2019, I knew I was going to face a little bit of a radical year. And it was a year I wasn't all that excited to get into. Because I think that in any entrepreneurial journey, the first uh, year and a half, it's just, will this work? Right? You can be scrappy and you could be messy and you could just build your business with like bubble gum and duct tape and be like, we're making it work, you know? And like all of a sudden, when your business hits a level of success, you realize we need to build systems in order for us to scale. And I knew that 2018 for me was building, it was a year of systems. And that's just not where I play. Like it's that's not my happy place. And what I realized in the beginning of years, I have to bring on people, bring on people whose skill set was just that. So we have successfully grown our team to 14 people besides my husband and myself. And when I look back at where I was, there was a lot of punch in the gut moments. Like there was a lot of like, what am I doing? How is this working? Was this a mistake? And the defining mark, my greatest successes only came on the heels of realizing how quickly we could rebound after a really rough spot and not judging yourself, right? Like the ending 2018 for me is just about, wow, it was the year of systems and 2020 is going to be a year of explosion. So we're excited. That's amazing. Um, we, we do teach systems visibility and sales for product people. And I think sometimes they want to do it all at the same time, but it's some, you know, you have to get to a certain point um, in sales to be able to afford the team or to improve your systems. Um, same thing with visibility. Sometimes visibility comes before and after systems or um, scaling and making more revenue. So I love that. Absolutely. So we wanted to have you on because we think you're an Instagram genius and, um, you know, not to, you know, I like dying over here. I was like, no, I'm like, you guys manage expectation. People who don't know who I am, they think like, I'm amazing. They're going to my Instagram account. Like, oh, she's I. Uh, I'm pretty normal, guys. I'm very normal. I'm not amazing. I just show up. I show up till I blow up. Okay. That's what you I do. do. I love that. But, but I, want, mm-hmm. I want our listeners, if they don't follow you already, to follow you because you do all the things. I mean, so let's jump into IGTV a bit. You have a very produced IGTV, and I know not everyone can do that. People get a little bit afraid of um, videos sometimes, but could you share maybe some ideas or tell us a little bit about IGTV for people who don't fully understand it and then how a product-based business could use it? Absolutely. So how about we, because oftentimes when I talk to business owners, but specifically product-based business owners, I feel like it's a, it's a harder sell. Like I have to sell you on the idea, but as a proud law school dropout, I would like to present a case and you, the judge and jury can obviously rule in my favor. So before we get there, let's reverse engineer it. Cause you said, Oh, Jasmine, you do all the things. And it's, I don't do all the things for kicks and giggles because who has time for that? I do all the things for all the strategy and the systems. How does then this happen for IGTV? Well, I look at Instagram as an app, as a portfolio of sorts to showcase and connect. With the introduction of stories, that gave me an opportunity to give an inside look to what only ever people see on an outside business. And we have no emotional attachment because it disappears in 24 hours. So we now have the opportunity to showcase our businesses, our products in the not so beautiful form to get people connected to the journey. Case in point, I was targeted by an ad on Instagram and it was click here to see how we produce our yoga and sweatpants in downtown LA. Um, they knew who they were targeting. I'm an LA girl. I love sweatpants. I love yoga and I'm American. I want to see that it's made here in LA and this iPhone video in a downtown Los Angeles, not pretty, not Instagramable warehouse was gone through on a time delay, quick laps, showing them how they're packaging. I bought a pair of sweats. Do I think they're amazing? I don't know yet, but I was so caught up in showing the journey that now advertisements are showing the back behind the scenes. So stories now give us an inside look to an outside business, right? So we can start testing the waters. But just in case you're not quite sure that people want to go deep with an IGTV, well, I go live and I get to ask questions to my dream customers in real time by offering them value. So what do I use stories and Instagram live for as a testing ground before I get into an investment for IGTV? Because IGTV, I've come to so say a thousand times over, IGTV is your own Netflix series. Like you have a Netflix show about your products. What are you going to do with it? So this is where people I see often business owners will have like what I call a talking head. They hold their iPhone out and then they talk for like 17 minutes straight. And 
When is the last time you ever watched a Netflix special when it was one person, one camera talk for 17 minutes? Doesn't happen. We have to look at Netflix as the proven model of how people want to consume. And then once we're ready to make an investment, and we're not willy-nilly about this investment, we know it's time to invest in a videographer to document our behind the scenes, our stock room, our products, our shipping, our thank you, our ribbons, our labels. We know it's the time after we've asked our audience how they want to consume our content on live and stories. Yeah, I love that. I mean, that is really how people are consuming. This is kind of the rise of the podcast as well, right? We have that a little bit of attention span, but when we want to binge, we want to binge. So the idea is really to get them to start binging on your IGTVs and kind of making sure that they're hearing the right stories that you're wanting to tell them. Absolutely. So to clarify, um, you're saying that when we, when they start to see that interaction or engagement on stories or on live, that's, Mm -hmm. they should note that sort of engagement. So if it was behind the scenes at the factory or them pouring their candles in their basement, that's something that people are interested in and that they would potentially create a Instagram, like an IGTV for that specifically. Yes. And I am a firm believer. I'm a total, I was homeschooled like as the daughter of an immigrant and my dad didn't know how to read until I was 25. My mom barely graduated high school. It's pretty amazing because we couldn't even afford textbooks. My mom at the end of every academic school year would dumpster dive for books that teachers threw out. And then she would get like three or four books and that were missing pages. And then she would reassemble one book. So I'm all about taking what you have and making it work. And I do this with business, right? So I do this, the proverbial dumpster dive when it comes to Instagram, because I'm going through my stories and I'm watching. Where is the fall off point? Which ones were, um, like I look at my analytics, who's been watching? Um, what is the most popular stories? What has gotten the most DMS when we do polls? Like when you're looking at Instagram specifically for product based businesses, you have your discoverability tools, which is like your location, um, geotagging, hashtagging, and then you have your engagement tools. These are the sliders. These are the quizzes. These are the polls. And so whenever you have engagement tools, Instagram created these because Instagram is asking business owners, please use these tools so that we can measure how engaged your audience is. And so here you have a free mechanism that Instagram is saying, please use, it will help us and it will help you. So let's just say you're pouring candles in your basement and you're like, who wants to see me pour candles in my basement? Y'all, a lot of people. The dirtier the (laughs) basement, the worse the light, the more people feel like, oh, this is the Rocky Balboa story. We want to root on Rocky because we're tired of rooting for the proverbial Russian candle maker, right? Like we want to say you, like punching that frozen stack of meat, you in your basement pouring candles and your essential oils, we want you to win. So if you have a poll and you set up your phone And it's on you while you're pouring your wax. And you'd say, for the holidays, would you prefer pine or would you prefer cinnamon? Like, you know, you're going to do both of them. But when people vote, what I want you to do is already have a cachet. So the next day, around hour 18, let's just say 24 people had voted and 18 of them really wanted cinnamon. I want you to send a DM to them and say, hey, Cheryl, guess what? I freshly poured some cinnamon. I haven't announced it yet. If you would like to be the first person to buy, I'll stick in an extra cinnamon sachet before we take it to market. Like this is literally, and people are like, I voted on something I wanted. Now I'm getting a personal message from the person who was pouring the candy candle in her basement and she's going to give me a cinnamon sachet. Of course I'll buy course I'll buy from Rocky, the candle maker. Like this is how it works. It's so simple Mm -hmm. and so hard because we're afraid of judgment. And we often let ego get in the way of, well, I'm trying to build a luxury brand. Guess what? We all are baby blue. Everybody starts somewhere. Gucci didn't start off as Gucci. Prada didn't start off as Prada. Everybody started in their own way. How then will you move from there? I love that. So And I just want you guys to know really fast that Jasmine was talking about like 24 responses. So it's not necessarily, I mean, how many of you would love to get, you know, a handful of those 18 people buying from you? I think people work really hard to get even that, just that one sale. So those sales, I know you have to reach out and get them. And we teach that with, um, service-based businesses tend to have funnels and people, you know, come to the top of the funnel and product is a bit different. And we feel like you have to reach out and grab them in. And so I love the idea of the DM polling and then engaging, getting the sale and then adding something extra because they are going to go tell their friends, oh my God, I got this. And their customer service is amazing. And they threw in this extra gift. You need to buy it as well. And can we play here for a second? Can yeah. I throw out an idea that yeah. you probably are going to like poo poo on, but I want somebody, I want somebody to do this because oftentimes I get from product-based business owners, oh, well, the funnels don't work for me because I'm not a personal brand. I'm not service-based. And I'm like, well, you can find 
excuses to why it won't work for you, or you can find reasons. And I have just been, even though I'm building a personal brand and I have a service-based business, I have still tested, my God, 50 potential lead magnets to build a funnel. And like four of them are the ones that like we double down on. People often want to give up after like the first three. And I'm like, you don't hit your right lead magnet or lead gen. So let's go back to Cheryl in her basement pouring candles. And she's like, who's possibly going to want to opt into a newsletter? Well, what if you were to create content that showcases what you do? And people, business owners are like, wait a minute, you mean show everything? And I'm like, show 110% of everything. Invest in a graphic designer on Fiverr, take photos with your iPhone and give a step-by-step tutorial on how you pour your own candles. And this is what's going to happen. People want to know, 2% will actually buy the tools to do it. 98% just want the dopamine hit of seeing your opt-in and seeing how you do it and they'll never do it. And of the 2% that actually do it, 1% will say, this is so hard. I'm never going to do this. Cheryl, send me a dozen of those candles. And 1% will do it. They'll have a craft day with their kids, make a mess and never do it again. It's true. It is true. I mean, they want to live vicariously, right? And it's that instant gratification of seeing somebody else do it where you don't have to do it yourself. Um, I love that you're saying to start with Insta stories. I think that that has a much low barrier of entry than just going straight to IGTV um, because it's so less intimidating. But even if you don't want to be the face of your brand, like I like to say, nobody knows who Kat and Jack are. That, you know, but you have to humanize your own brand, right? Even if you're not the face, maybe you're the voice or you're the hands that are making. It's, it, you don't have to be the talking head like what you're saying. Absolutely. And depending on the size of the business, I've followed companies and businesses that have Instagram takeovers from their customer you know, support, their shipping. They're even receiving when you have Jose sweeping out like the shipping and receiving department. And he's just like, this is what we do. This is how we get it. And then it's like a time lapse of Jose unloading like the truck into the storage room. And I'm like, that was pretty fascinating. Now I like Jose and now I like this company. Like it's really fascinating that you, you, you can find an excuse or you can find a reason. Yeah, exactly. So what if somebody doesn't want to be the face of their brand? So again, we're, we're podcasters, we're service space. Our faces are relevant to our, our listeners, but how about somebody who has a product and they they don't know if they're, they're personally relevant to go on stories, for example, with their faces? Well, without being emotional, because I'm a hundred percent like linear, logical thinker, the studies have shown that like when a, a photo is posted on Instagram and it has a human in it, it's 64% more likely to get engagement. So if I'm just looking at this quant, if I'm just looking at this math, I would put people in the photo. Like mm-hmm. I, I want engagement Engagement leads to trust. Trust leads to conversations. Conversations lead to conversions. So you could sit here and just say, you're not the person to be selling it. And maybe you're not, but if I were you, I would be really hell bent on getting somebody who is the embodiment of your brand. If it's a social media manager, if it's your dream customer, if it's Instagram takeovers with a strategic group of like five to seven people, that's fine. But you have to be very, very aware that like engagement is driven by humans because we want the human interaction. So it's get comfortable if you can't afford to pay somebody to represent your brand. You are going to be the best representation until you really get off the ground. Agreed. I think for service-based people, now is the time, right? Service-based people, the story of the entrepreneur is so hot right now. For a product-based person, the story of the small brand is so hot right now, right? So get on board, get comfortable because this is the time to be testing that out. I could, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One thing that I want to clarify when it comes like to time to test it out is like, I know the story. So I've had this conversation literally a thousand times over. And the next conversation is, but yeah, but I don't have a videographer. I don't have a photographer. I'm not sure if it's representative of the brand. And I'm just saying what is hot right now is real. Real is more valuable and more engaging than perfect. Now I didn't say ugly, right? I didn't say ugly. I just said real portrait mode on your iPhone is amazing. A ring light on your phone is amazing. You would be so surprised. So defer to the real and don't worry about the beautiful, beautiful curated awesomeness all the time. I love it. And we tell people better done than perfect. So we want them, they get so stuck on that perfect with graphics, with all the things, and we just want them to get it done. So it's, it's turning it out. Like you said, not ugly, but done. 
Yeah. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about stopping the scroll. So you are a photographer, you take beautiful pictures. Were you talking about iPhone use and people do take some of their own photos or they hire out and they get, um, photos of their product, but how would you suggest our product people sort of stop the scroll? They're, they're inundated. They're, um, people's feeds are inundated with lots and lots of stuff. Maybe they're not even paying for sponsored posts or ads. Um, how do they get people to engage and, and with their feeds? Oftentimes, um, what I see a lot of business owners do is they include a call to action, which is thumbs up, great job. But if the call to action is at the bottom of the post, there's a good chance that the people who are seeing the post are not getting to the bottom of the post because they're not actually guiding their audience to click on the read more button. So you can have the most powerful CTA, but if you can't hook them to read more, no one's going to see the CTA. So how do you get somebody to stop their scroll? Well, I've discovered that trial and error, both service and product-based businesses, there's three really effective ways to stop somebody from scrolling. And that is to, number one, identify a specific audience so that they can pre-qualify if they should invest their time and read more. So for example, calling all dog lovers. I would pre-qualify myself like I'm a dog lover. All of a sudden, I'm paused. And that's all we really need is to create somebody to pause. And then it says, calling all dog lovers, do you? And then I would have to click on the read more. I'm more inclined just to see what's on the other end. I might read it and then get to the powerful CTA. That would be identifying a particular audience. Number two is what I call a juicy share. This is kind of like playing to like the intrigue, right? Can I share something I've never shared before on Instagram? Oh. I want to read more. Like I've never admitted <laughs> I this publicly. literally want to hear more every single and, time you're saying these. <laughs> because this is human nature. This is human nature. We've been trained and conditioned to do this. And yet for so often, and I actually feel like product-based business, uh, business owners have the luxury of just deferring to the sale because it's there. So it's literally, it's so easy to become QVC. And you, it's so easy for you to believe that your candles, everybody needs your candles. No, you have to tell them why they need it. And this then becomes to the third component, which would be to ask an engaging question. Now, most of the time, and a, a question will come at the end of a post, like in the form of a CTA. Can you tell me? But then what happens is that people, I didn't say ask a question. I, I said ask an engaging question. And the difference between a question is that you have to remember your dream customer, like your candle buyer, isn't really waiting and standing in line at Target to respond back with three paragraphs to your really elongated question. Like what is the one time in your life that you look back that had a pivotal experience and that was synonymous with the scent while growing up? Nobody's going to be responding to that. It's literally like, do you like cinnamon or pine scent? A or B? And what you do is when all of a sudden you get a comment that's just like A or you get an emoji that's like the pine tree, then you as the business owner, ah, it's your opportunity to teach them how to engage with you. And when it comes to engagement, what we really want to do is coach our followers to leave comments more than four words because four words are weighted differently in the algorithm. So if somebody leaves me a pine tree and I'm like, I too love pine, be sure to check back in a couple of weeks when we launch it. When somebody leaves like a fun, cute, Awesome. You respond back with, I appreciate your support. Check back soon. Thank you so much for this. I hope you're having a great day. It means so much that you're here. I can go all day with forward comments because I'm in my comments every day, responding back, teaching people how to engage with me. So those three things. I love that. Um, so it's fine even if you're the one who's commenting for more, right? You're the... Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like Instagram. And I always try to make sure to the best of my ability to really tap into my comments within like 30 minutes of me posting because it's indicating to the algorithm that I'm there and that I'm active and also teaching people who are early responders that there's like, uh, not a reward, but, but there is, but there's like an incentive. There's a more, the sooner you respond to a post, there's much more likelihood that I'm actually going to respond to you. You wait a couple of days. I'm just not really going back really deep in those feeds to respond. So yeah, I'm incentivizing people to respond as quickly as possible. Yeah. People want to be seen and they want to respond they want to be seen no matter who you are, that you see what they're absolutely. saying. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I also love that it's organic. So what you're talking about is organic and unpaid versus paid advertising, you know, so, oh yeah. my God, how we, I honest to God, want to have this podcast be a weekend long podcast. I want to talk, <laughs> can we just do the 48 hour podcast? Cause I could live right, here for days, for days, because I am 98, 99% uh, organic. 
Mm-hmm. And what happens is the reason why people are completely befuddled and amazed at like the cost per lead that I'm getting. It's not because my copy is all that amazing, or my photos, or my video, or my content, my marketing content is amazing. It's the fact that I'm so driven with organic content that I have a really hot audience. So it costs pennies to retarget them because they've already proven that they've engaged in the past. There's a higher likelihood with them engaging with paid content, which all of a sudden within the algorithm doubles down because I can pay for exposure. But what I'm not paying for is when people organically start tagging friends and sharing, that then becomes like extra honey on top of the honeycomb. And you're like, but you like my ad just caught on fire because people think it's one of my posts and they're already used to engaging. That is the entire game that I play. And for product-based businesses, that is all day, every day, pennies for the dollar. I love that. Yes. Yeah. And your ad is bringing the value too, even then. So it's like you're, it is confusing, not confusing, but I do get mixed up like, oh, this is an ad. It's a really good ad. It's just <laughs> valuable content, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, do you advertise? Because you kind of have a product. So Social Security is a is a product. Do you advertise for that? Or are you advertising more of the whole brand and Social Security is a part of that? So what we do, we have like a tiered strategy because I've just have never been all that effective at like hard sales coming out like directly. Like you'll, you, you will be hard pressed to ever find a video. Where I'm like, hi, my name is Jasmine Starr and I'm the founder of Social Curator. Join <laughs> here for coaching and social media resources. It's like, that'll be just dead in the water. Like that, nobody would respond to that. So what we've decided to do is we uh, start layering our most popular videos, IGTV, Facebook. And if you have engaged with one video, we'll show you another video. All of these are just value adds to build a list. And if you did not opt into the list after watching three to four of our videos for more than 40% of the video you will then be followed up with an invitation to a free class, one of three free classes. And again, 90% value add, 10%. Like if you want to go deeper and you want to continue this conversation and have these resources, join us on the inside of Social Curator. So it is a slow burn. What we've noticed, it takes about four months to convert a new follower or somebody on our list into being a member of Social Curator. And people are like, are you kidding me? Like your membership's not even that expensive. And I'm like, I know. And this should just go to show business owners in general. It is a low monthly fee and it's taking us four months and daily content to convert. What does that then look like for you? This is the long game. Yeah, it is. And we, you know, a lot of people think if they build it, they'll come, right? If you build it, they will come. It's not true. I know a lot of times I tell our, our clients, because we work one on one, is that they think they could put up a website and then people are going to find them. Mm-hmm. But it takes so much more. And now we believe that if you build it, they will come for the content. So it's all the things that you're talking about. They're coming, they're circling you, they're watching all your stories, they might engage with you in your lives, wherever they are. And then, I mean, four months is a pretty, I mean, I know it feels like a long time, but it's also a good amount of time because I know other people that have said it takes, you know, over a year for followers to convert to actual buyers. As a point of clarification, I know four months is a great time, but like we out here posting twice a day on Facebook, yeah. going live twice a week, going live twice a week on Instagram, posting IGTV videos three to four times a week, going live, doing stories every day, like running ads to warm traffic. I mean, we're doing all the things at 110% is taking us four months. I'm like, if you ain't doing all the things, like, uh, yeah, it's going to take you a little longer. It is. Absolutely. Okay. So any other tips that you might have as a photographer, let's say for our product businesses on potentially how to share their products. So they get professional photos done oftentimes, and then they kind of do those in spouts, like if it's for collection or holiday, but anything you recommend in terms of taking photos of their product, if it's like in their house or, you know, um, something that's very seasonal that they want to just like shoot a quick picture or two to put on on social media? Yeah, I'm going to do my best to describe, I'm going to do my best to describe this. And then if you want, maybe you guys can follow up on my team and then we'll link it in your show notes. It's a free video that I just posted out on Facebook, but it's literally like what I call my lighting kit. And there's huge air quotes around this because it's so ghetto fabulous, but like it works, it works. And the best part of it is I've shown this a thousand times over product-based businesses, service-based businesses swear by this. And the good news is it's like less than $12. So what I want to do is first, you're walking through. Let's, I'm like a storyteller. Okay. So 
you grab your red cart at Target and you pass by the wafting smells of popcorn and Starbucks, which you think would smell disgusting, but you're actually like, oh, I'm home. I'm in Mecca. And you pass by the jewelry section and then the children's section. And then you get to the partying goods section and the craft section. You're going to make a left down the aisle and you're going to go to a craft board, like a poster board, a white poster board that's going to cost you $1.99. You're going to want to get two of those. Then what you're going to want to do is walk further down the aisle and you're going to find Elmer's foam board and it comes in a set of two. No, this is not a sponsored post for Elmer's, although I wish I had an affiliate link. Um, but I mean, like, what's the point? What do you want an affiliate link? It's like $5 for these boards. I'm like, I'm going to get a whole whopping 10 cents for this referral. So um, you have your white poster board and your two foam boards from Elmer's and then you're going to get clear tape. Then when you get home, you're going to unwrap the Elmer's foam board and then you're going to create the foam board and you're going to put it in a V formation. In the photography world, this is called a V flat. So you're going to create a V and then you're going to tape just one side, like a hinge of your two white boards. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create the exact same replica. So I'm sorry, when you're at Target, you needed two sets of the two foam boards. So a total of four foam boards, right? So then you do the exact same set. And so what you do is you open up your V to an L shape, and then you create the mirror opposite of another L facing the other way. And your white poster board is at the bottom. What you've just created is a three-sided box, a light box. So you're going to go in front of a window or you're going to go in front of a door and you're going to face your light box towards that. And you're going to place your product on it below. And then from above, you're going to take an aerial shot with your iPhone or a DSLR because good light on a white background, you get impeccable photos that need hardly any editing. That right there, that $12, you're welcome. The next time you see me somewhere, buy me a drink because I just gave you the gift of a lifetime. And I, I never brag, but I love this white box. Like people tell me and they like, best investment for your product based business is $12. You're welcome. Target. Next time you see me, get me a drink. Thank I you. I love it. Thank you for being on the podcast and sharing that $12 tip. I mean, people are gonna, <laughs> we're going to get all the comments. Um, so you guys go on, tell Jasmine, go on her Instagram and tell her that you used it. Um, so Jasmine, thank you so much. Will you tell our listeners how they can connect with you and how to find you? Yes, absolutely. We try to make it as easy as possible. Jasminestar.com and Jasmine Star on all social platforms. And you have a podcast now, so they should just click oh on it. Oh my gosh, you know what? You guys need to really teach me how to talk about my <laughs> podcast. I'm out here like struggle bus. Yes, and it's the Jasmine Star Show. So we're keeping it consistent. But we really do like just to have fun conversations. You guys have been just truly like unicorns and you guys have paved the way for other female entrepreneurs to follow in your footsteps and you guys are so refined. I am happily like hotmess.com trying to figure out like my podcast testing ideas, doing different things. I absolutely love it. And this has been like remarkable. You guys are phenomenal at what you guys do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're honored Jasmine. to have you here. And um, yeah, and everyone, so go ahead and subscribe. That's what we want you to do. We want you to stop listening to this podcast now and go on over and subscribe to the Jasmine Star Show. Okay, and but am I going to ruin your flow? Am I going to ruin your flow? I probably am because this is, I'm not a professional podcaster. Go. We have like a few minutes. Do you want to do like a flash fire Q&A? Am I putting you on the spot? No. Okay. No, we usually end with one, but are you saying you want to do one for I us? I do because I'm watching my time and I'm like, I'm having the best time. And I know I have to get off in like seven minutes, but I'm like seven minutes. This is like yes, audio gold. Let's, let's, let's go. Right. Let's, let's go. We have, let's like, do it. Rocky, our candle maker needs to hear from us. So let's right. go. All right. Well, that's uh, that's something else. So Mina, <laughs> what about you? Because you have a product. What would you want to ask Jasmine? What would I want to ask Jasmine? Um, I would say, how do you know what your positioning should be? How should you tell? What should your story always have? Like, what's the story gold that you should always have when you're figuring out how to position your story to tell the people? Well, when I hear this question, I absolutely love it, but I also know it's so high level. So I want to make sure that everybody who's <laughs> listening can actually take this and could put this in granular work. In 2020, we're really focusing on the inside of Social Curator on choosing three pillars of content. These are the things, these are the themes and things we really want you to hone in so that when people think about your candles or think about your dog leashes or think about the jewelry you make, they think in terms of the thing you want to talk about. So in 2020, the thing that we're really trying to position myself, my three pillars of content are going to be how to build a brand, 
social media marketing, and the idea that impossibilities are actually possibilities. So we're going to have, you know, uh, branding experience, social media, what we're going to be saying and doing online, and then like the inner work that it takes for us to tell ourselves a different story. So when people now talk about me, the big push in 2020, when people talk about me, I really want them to be describing me in three ways. She really helped me build my brand, or she teaches me how to show up on social media, or she just refuses to take no for an answer, and she has empowered me to feel the same. That's what we want to do again and again, and that's for any business owner, choose your three pillars of content, no matter what you sell and always find a way to interweave that back into what it is that you're talking about on social. I love that. So Jacqueline, should we actually go into our quick fire? If you don't mind. Do you want some fun questions? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. These are our fun questions. We, we knew we had limited time with you. We wanted to get like all the goodness, but we are going to ask you some fun ones. So okay. um, we know you're a coffee person. So yes. what is your coffee order? Oh gosh. I'm so boring. It's an Americano with three shots. Okay. That's not too boring. Oh yeah. That is some and heavy hitter up. coffee. Right I know there. it is. I mean, I have to see, I have to see dots when I drink my coffee. Um, but another thing that we just, that we just discovered was, uh, oh, hazelnut creamer. So it's not almond milk. It's hazelnut milk and just a splash of it. You guys, it's life changing, life changing. So hazelnut, the nut milk. Amazing. Yes. Cause we're big oat milk latte drinkers over here. We've like okay. converted a whole bunch of listeners to that. So I, that is my next purchase. I do. I know I love me some oat milk, but me and carbs, we're not friends. So I try, I try to go the nut <laughs> route, but yes, the protein route. Um, okay. So the, what is your favorite thing on your desk? Oh, it's this, uh, Polaroid photo of my husband and my dog sitting on the porch of uh, the house that we had just bought. So cute. Finish the sentence. When I pick up my phone, I go to Instagram. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed for that one. <laughs> so many people. That's their Honestly, answer. 95% of the people we ask, it's Instagram. Not yeah. even like check to see if my spouse or my kids are okay. <laughs> Always Instagram. <laughs> All right. So you wish you knew how to sing. That's cool. I really, I mean, I would just, I would do this podcast and I would sing. <laughs> I, mean, I would throw it down. I love it so much. <laughs> All right. What was the last show you binge watched? Netflix. You know, I think you guys, this is how uncool I am. I think it was making of a murderer. I mean, it's been, it's been a while since I've actually binge watched on Netflix. I probably need a weekend of it. All right. Well, you're busy. So we'll give you. That <laughs> um, and what should the title in your email signature actually say? A hot mess and making it work. I love it. Um, okay. And then do you want to do the alter ego? Oh, shoot. I forgot about alter ego. No, you do. So you know how Beyonce has Sasha Fierce? Do you have um, an alter ego or a stage persona? Yeah, Jasmine Starr. <laughs> <laughs> then who is Jasmine Starr when she's not on stage? It, Jasmine. Okay. Like Jazzy, like the, to, to my friends and family. And I think that's a, probably the biggest misnomer. We'll kind of like take a little detour here. I do believe that w- what we see and who we love and who we're enamored with is Sasha Fierce. And I believe that Sasha and Beyonce are two equal parts. So... Jasmine Star and Jasmine are one and the same, but people will think that immediately I walk in the room and I'm center of the attention or that I'm really outgoing or I, that I'm an extrovert or that I always, and it's completely quite the opposite where people think like, oh, she must be a talker. It's I'm a listener 98% of the time because I grew up obese as a child and I didn't know how to read and my parents were immigrants and we were really poor. So as a result of being an outsider, it really honed my observation skills. Now, I was an adult and entrepreneur. I can go in. I still fall into the wallflower capacity, but I could read a room, know a room, see where I can go far before anybody else can actually get there. And being an introvert has actually been one of my greatest assets. Yeah, same. It just takes a bit of practice. Um, I think also you you you're conscious of it more where you know that you have to work on it. So that's the thing, right? Some people are naturally gifted at it. So they just don't work on it. Whereas I think a little bit of an edge is working on it and practicing it and honing it is, and then you just become really great at it. So true. And can I just take like one minute? I don't know why I feel like people are like, Jasmine, are you intuitive? And I'm like, I don't really think so, but I feel strongly that I need to say something for somebody who needs to hear it because for years, Whatever persona I was going to put on at that moment, Jasmine, Jasmine Star, Jazzy to my family, I would always have my head down. I would get out of cars and I would just look down and get at airplanes and look down. And I don't know if it was how I was raised. I don't know if it was a story I was telling myself, but my sweet, amazing husband and business partner two years ago said, lift your head up, lift your head up. You walk down an airport with your head held high. You walk into a room and you belong. You walk into a boardroom or a washroom or a warehouse, head up, because people will know 
that they can trust you when you look them in the eye. If you are looking down, you don't trust yourself. When you are looking up and people in your eye, they're going to trust you. So whoever is listening right now, hold your head up high, look people in the face and know that you belong. I love that so much. I have a similar story just really quick as we're doing a detour here. Um, so the, I didn't know that I did this, but one of my friends, I went into his bathroom and then when I came out, he's like, you know, you can turn the light on. I was like, yeah, I do turn it on. Just turn it off before I come out. He's like, that is something that you should look into because <laughs> he's like, it's like you're entering the world with your light turned off. I need, wow. to turn on, I need to turn now, on my light. I'm going to run through my house right now and turn on all my lights. <laughs> I'm going to walk with a flashlight. <laughs> I need a ring light in every room, right? <laughs> so, like, oh, I love this. So here's to us, the women in the world, <laughs> who turn lights on and hold their head high. It is so true. Okay, so the last couple questions is, what are your two favorite emojis that you use? Um, I always use like the prayer hands because I'm always thankful to people all the time. Like, if somebody <laughs> does anything, it's always a prayer hand. And then it's always the, the, the kissy one. Like the XO. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I'm like just it. a love bug. I'm like, yeah. I, sometimes people think I'm like really hard edge. I'm like, no, it's all thankfulness and gratitude over here. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of went into this before, but we believe that entrepreneur years are like dog years. What would you say to baby Jasmine that you could say to her now in her beginning of her entrepreneur journey? Mm. Everything will be okay and it's better than you imagine. Mm. So Perfect good. way to end this. I know. So good. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. I hope you have a good day. Thanks, Thanks, Jasmine. Jasmine. You guys, wasn't that such a good episode? I'm feeling so inspired. I cannot believe she shared all of those secrets with us and I can't wait to implement them into our business. And I'd love to know, are you guys going to do the same? Yeah. For sure. I mean, let us know on Instagram, right? Show up till you blow up on Instagram and then DM us, of course, because we are on there all the time. And like Jasmine says, she answers every single one of her DMs and so do we. We get in there. And if we don't, it's because me and I are both monitoring I'm our DMs together. usually impersonating Jacqueline a lot of times because <laughs> she'll get personal ones. I'll be like, yeah, that's great. But I mean, we're in there. So one of us reads, the other one yeah. doesn't. And then it gets lost in our inbox. There's still no way on Instagram to like to label things. But you guys hang out with us on Instagram. That is where we show up in our stories. That is where we're in the DM. We supported a bunch of people through Black Friday, Cyber Monday through the DM. We want to support you. And we also want to support you by joining one of our programs that we have just launched. So remember yeah. at the beginning of this episode? Yes. We're inviting you guys to apply for our masterminds and check out our new Dash Insiders accelerator program, which is so exciting. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you hop into the DM because it is the quickest way. I mean, the fastest, quickest way to reach one of us so we can answer your questions and, and make sure that it's the right fit for you and getting into 2020, a new decade. So here's the timeline for all of you. So you're just aware, because I know some of you want to know the details. So we are taking applications right now for the climb and the top masterminds. There are limited spots available in those. So if you want in, get your application in and it's on a first come first received application basis. And we've already filled spots in there. Now, Dash, we are opening that up for registration. I think we were saying on the 26th of December of 2019. 16th. Um, 16th. Oh, the 16th. <laughs> One of those days. You'll see in the email. Right. Look in the right, show notes. <laughs> right now though. Oh yeah, it was the 16th. But right now, um, what we want you guys to do is get on that wait list if you're interested to find out all the information so that when we open those doors, we have a super special deal for all of you if you sign up for Dash. And now Dash is a quarterly program and will only open up once a quarter in the first week of every quarter, we're going to help you plan for 90 days plus all the other goodness that you'll find out. And we'll talk to you more about Dash. Um, and once you're in, you're in with us and we're going to help you. And so please, there's limited spots for the masterminds. We don't want you to miss out on this. We are only launching these masterminds once for 2020. This is now a year program and it's only going to be in January of 2020. So if you want to work with us in our masterminds, we will not have this opportunity again until 2021. So if this is something that you want to do, we want to work with you and please send in your applications at theproductclass.com slash programs. So we'll see you there. <laughs>